to do this for our community because others are grateful to receive it. This whole world that we're moving around in right now is, I believe, based, needs to be based in a condition and a premise of gratitude. And if you talk, take a look at what our ninja training is and how we go through our ninja selling philosophy, it is so much based in gratitude. In fact, the first thing you do every morning is what? Gratitude journals, right? So I, the, our speaker today is a foremost expert on that. I had the absolute pleasure, didn't even know it at the time, 32 years ago to meet him. He was my boss's boss at Nordstrom. And right then and there, whether we, either one of us knew it or not, and David and I had dinner last night with my three sons, we were talking about numerous things, and one of them was David didn't even realize that that had happened. And I think he'll talk later about how the effect we have in other people's lives and not know it. He had a profound effect in my life. And so when I talk about those three things of being successful, the third one is have a mentor. And David was my first mentor in business. 32 years later, we're closer now than we were back then. We continually talk to one another. And I just, you guys are in for such a treat. For those of you who've, who've here, who came down and had us, went through the session with us with David this summer. Okay, so you guys are even in for a bigger treat. So without further ado, I'd love to introduce to you that gratitude guy, David Brody. Can you put that on the podium for me? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. I'd like to start off with a little bit of an exercise and I will just say up front if you're not comfortable standing that's okay but I would like to illustrate something and I would like you to stand up right now if you would if you have lost your parents yeah sorry just stand up if you've lost your parents And then please stand up if you've lost a spouse or a child. No, keep, stay, please remain standing for those of you that have stood. A spouse or a child. And then stand up if you've lost somebody to suicide or to a disease. Cancer, heart, all that type of thing. And lastly, please stand up if you've lost someone to alcohol, drugs, or pills. I would say there was just a handful of people that haven't stood up. And the reason I wanted to do this, and as Scott was talking about gratitude, is that the big thing I'm gonna talk about today is what gratitude can do for you. If you look at all these people that are standing, that have experienced a loss of one of those types of things, I'm offering a mindset and a vehicle that can help you so much. Please sit down, thank you so much. I lost my wife to a prescription pill overdose when she was 38 years old. My sons were four years old and 14 years old. And I just needed to find something at some point because I really struggled. And I had all sorts of losses in my life. And again, that's why usually when I do that first exercise, it's 80, 90% of the people, sometimes more, that stand up that have had some loss that profoundly impacted you. And so my philosophy is, well, what are we gonna do to help you? What's gonna be the coping mechanism whether it's a gratitude journal or the spirit of gratitude or anything to help you get through it because none of us get out of this life alive. We're all born and then we all pass away at a date later on in our life. And what do you do in between those two dates to cope with the things that are tossed in front of you? We all have amazing challenges, amazing obstacles that we have to overcome. So one of the things that occurred to me is a lot of it depends on how you look at something. What's your viewpoint? We've all seen people that have a very positive attitude a very negative attitude and people that are up all the time people that are down and it's your choice happiness is a choice happiness versus being sad being positive versus negative up down left right it's always a choice so now I'm gonna ask you to stand up again because I want to show you something else too so go ahead and stand up and so here's what I'd like you to do this is, has to do with how you look at something I'd like you to take your right arm I'd like you to extend it as high as you can and I want you to start turning it in a clockwise manner. Now when I'm in high schools, they have no idea what clockwise is. So I have to, I have to go show them a face of a watch like this and there's one over there you can see. But seriously, they don't even know, they're at, which, which way is clockwise? It's so funny. So keep, keep it going clockwise. Now just start slowly bringing it down. Bring it down to the top of your head, 
forehead, eyes, nose, chin, chest. What direction is it going now? Who said that? What's your name? Amy? Good job, Amy. It's going counterclockwise. Okay, you can sit down. Amy? Amy? Can you come up and get a book? This is little quotes and gratitude nuggets to chew on. It's called, I will be in the front of, thank you, Amy. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll be in front of four or 500 people. Which way is it going now? <laughs> Just shout it out, Bueller. You know me, something. Just do something. So I always have a few books around for somebody just for participating because I tend to do a lot of uh, audience involvement, if you will. But the point is that it doesn't change direction, but your view of it does. It's clockwise here. It's counterclockwise down here because you look above and below. But it's my way of illustrating. I don't see any glasses of water here today. And you could say a glass half full or half empty. It's the same type of thing. But again, it depends on how you look at it. And, I, and when you hopefully walk away or at the end of my talk, think about, wow, he made me think about a couple of things and what gratitude can do for me. Now, I remember years ago, I was doing a lot of 10K races. And there was a race, and I live in Seattle, and there was a race in Seattle that went from this golf course on the east side where all the rich people live across the floating bridge up to Husky Stadium. It's a 10K race. And I was having a really struggling, struggle of a day. It was pouring down rain. Little kids were passing me and everything. It was really pathetic. But I'm running along and I can like see those two fountains that used to shoot the water up in the air. And I'm like halfway across the bridge and I'm just struggling and I'm thinking, God, this is terrible. He used to run and train and everything and I wasn't doing well at all. But then I thought to myself, well, wait a second, I had to like look behind me and see who's behind me. There's all these people in front of me. And so when you're running, it's not easy to look behind yourself, but you kind of, I tried to look back and I saw all these people all the way up to the toll booth, where we, the whole toll booth used to be. And it occurred to me as I'm going along and I thought, you know what's interesting? If all these people in front of me were not here, I'd be in first place. And I thought, wouldn't that be cool? I'd be out front. If all those people had chosen not to come to the race today, I'd be leading the pack right now. And all those people that were behind me. So again, it comes back to just how you look at something. And the thing that I want to illustrate again, over and over again, and I'm going to talk a little later about the most important relationship you ever have is the one you have with the person in the mirror. And I'm a Christian, and I believe in God, and I go to church, and that's all important as well. That could be 1A, this could be 1B, whatever it is, somewhere in the top one or two is that relationship you have with yourself. So I want to do a little exercise to prove a point about how you view yourself. And there's a 3 by 5 card that's kind of in your packet. Kirsten was nice enough to pass those things out. There's another card that has my picture on it we'll talk about later. But for the time being, that 3 by 5 card, I'd like you to get that card out my little timer out here and you are going to need a partner on this exercise so if you are at an uneven marked table Kirsten would you do me a monster favor and come to this table so that'll, that'll make it even but you have to have a partner and there's no like three different people so do we have another one who could, who needs a partner oh what about that table over there oh there we go there's one and then I see three people at this table four three oh uh, Anybody else that's, uh, how about right behind you? Perfect, thank you so much for participating. I don't know, it's just so funny. I do this exercise a lot, I do a couple of talks a week and I just get such a kick out of it. I wish everybody could be a speaker at some point because you stand on a stage and you look at people and there's always, I go, you need a partner and there's three people down here. Uh, we're doing the three of us. I, no, you're not. <laughs> this is a partner thing. This isn't like cutthroat in pool. This is like two people. It's got to be you too. And it doesn't matter if you know the person or not. In fact, sometimes if you don't know the person, it even makes it a more effective exercise. So here's what I'd like you to do. On your 3 by 5 card, it says David Brooke on the front of it. In the upper left-hand corner, upper left-hand corner, write two words. You are. Y-O-U-A-R-E. You are. Upper right hand corner, write your partner's name. And if you don't know your partner, introduce yourself. All right, and lastly, in the lower right hand corner, print your name. 
first and last or Fred S or whatever you'd like to do, just print your name in the lower right hand corner. And also it might be effective to put the date down there, 1720. All right, everybody got it? So here's what I'm, I'm going to give you 60 seconds. Get my timer out here. And what I'd like you to do in one minute, I want you to write as many things as you can about your partner. You are happy. You are intense. You are cheerful. However you see that partner of yours, write as many things as you can, as fast as you can, in 60 seconds, go. About 15 seconds. And stop. So occasionally I've done this, I always make it right around 60 seconds. Some people write a lot of things, some people don't write as much, it depends on how fast they are or how fast they think. I've actually paired up with people that didn't have a partner and I'm writing like crazy and look over the guy's written like one thing about me. <laughs> he talks a lot, I, you are a talker. And I go, thanks, that's all you could come up with me? Don't you like the sweater? I mean, it's like, oh. anyway. Another 60 seconds, take 30 seconds each, read to each other what you wrote about each other, go. Okay, and stop. Now what I'd like you to do is exchange cards so you have the one that was written about you. And what I'd like you to do, we all learn in many different ways by visual, seeing things, hearing things, kinetic, touching, all these different things. And even though you just heard that person read all those things they said about you, I want you to read them yourself and see those words written on the paper. Just notice the words they wrote, notice the handwriting, the script, the size of the print, whatever, because that'll sometimes plan in your brain even a little better. So just take a few seconds to read all those comments they made about you. And so as you, after you heard them say those things, and then you read them just now, by show of hands, how many people might hold on to that card? Excellent, it's always 90 to 95%. And why I find this, so what does this have to do with gratitude? Why does somebody look at you in such a better light than you often look at yourself in terms of how you view yourself? What's that? That is true. Gratitude can help with that. We're our own worst critic, and it's so true, and I don't understand why. I don't understand why. If you're not going to advocate for yourself, who's going to advocate for you? 
You're in a business where a lot of times, in my opinion, it's kind of lonely out there. I'm glad I remember what group I was talking to. That's right. But it's true. It's really true. And so your self-esteem is even more important to keep yourself pumped up and going forward on those days when maybe things aren't looking as well. Your mindset's not as positive. Now, I know you all have gratitude journals that I believe you've gotten through Scott and Windermere. And as long as you're writing in those every day, you really plant that in your brain to focus on what you have, which you should be so grateful for. But why that is so amazing to me is this exercise and why so many people say they're going to hold on to that card is because the gentleman's absolutely right. Why is it I would say something to myself? I would never say to a friend ever. I would call myself names. I would never say to a friend. I used to call myself a name long before I met Scott that I finally stopped using one day and I don't even say the word because it's pathetic to me. I used to call myself an L-O-S-E-R. And I thought, what is with you? Why does somebody else see you in such a different light than you see yourself? Helping yourself focus on gratitude every day will make such a difference to review your blessings, your abundance, everything that you have. It'll plant that brain. It'll give you a better connection with yourself. Now I will tell you, I've spoken from junior highs to senior centers and in the junior highs, I stopped doing this exercise. They're like 13, 12, 13 years old. The, the guy comes up and shows me a card and it says, you are an idiot. <laughs> well, that's not the spirit of this exercise. This is, this is supposed to be seeing some of these highlights. Can you imagine somebody saying, I see you as, or you are a knucklehead? I mean, it's just, it just doesn't work that way, but that's why people see us in such a different light. So that's something that I offer to you as far as how gratitude can make such a big difference to you. When Dana had passed away, that was on September 29th, 1998. I had lost her, and prior to that, my father to suicide, my mother to cancer, friends in a car accident, buddies in Vietnam. I'd lost all sorts of people. And I thought, I'm gonna have to find something. Ultimately, I found gratitude, and I found the gratitude journal. But how you view yourself is so incredibly important, that self-confidence, that self-esteem, and this is one of the biggest ways that can help. So that's what I like to talk about to start off with, which is embracing the gratitude. The next thing is, is it takes as long as it takes, you can't ever give up. You just can't ever give up. Winston Churchill, I believe, was the one that was quoted as saying, you can never, ever, ever, ever give up. And after Dana had passed away, Connor was four, Kyle was 14, and we all struggled mightily. And it was really, really tough. She was 38, I think I mentioned. And it was a prescription pill overdose, so it was really unexpected. and just really, really unfortunate. But Connor struggled even more than Kyle. And he did terrible in school, he did terrible in sports, he wanted to play baseball, and I'm trying to get back from being the, or get to be the mother and the father of these two young men, these two young boys. But he insisted on playing baseball. So we're going and he's doing the coach pitch and then the t-ball, and he's having such a heck of a time. And like on the t-ball thing, you know, the ball's on the tee, and he's swinging the bat up here, and he's looking at me. And I go, Connor, the ball is down on the tee. That's what you have to hit. So he keeps lowering it, lowering it, lowering it. He finally lowers it too much. He hits the tee and the ball dribbles off and he goes, Dad, I got a hit. <laughs> and I didn't know what to say. He was just, he was like five years old at the time, maybe a year after she had passed away and he was having a hard time. He went on to never play. It just kept going on and on. I'd go to practices, all the different little league things. And he never played. And finally we got to this game on, I think it was May 31st, 2005, something like that. And the team was playing one of their rivals, and it was the bottom of the seventh, they were down seven to six, and there's two out, and there's a guy in second, and a guy in third. And there's nobody left in the dugout that the coach is gonna play, because he's not gonna play Connor. So he yells down to the guy, who's left in the dugout? And he goes, Connor Brook is. He says, he goes, send them out. So here comes Connor, never even played. He's got a bat and he's swinging it like he's Ken Griffey Jr. You know, like he's gonna belt one out of here. And he gets up to the plate, I'm in the stands. I do the only thing I can imagine to do is just, how about a bunt? <laughs> just anything, Lord, just to help this young man. Ball one, strike one, ball two, full count. 
The guy's on second and third, as I mentioned. The next pitch comes in. He just rips it down thir the third baseline, goes into left field. The guy from third comes in to score. The guy from second rounds third and comes down to the plate. The ball comes in. The catcher catches it. The guy from third, the catcher at the home plate, they crash in the plate, and the ball pops out. And they win the game 8-7. to seven. And he's standing by himself out on second base, about where those cookies are over there. And he goes, Dad, I got a hit. <laughs> and I remember going home that night and sitting down on the bed and talking about, it was never about baseball. It was about you just can't give up. And when I get to know people after I've spoken or done a workshop or whatever, I just, you could go from table to table and you could find out I'm almost absolutely guaranteed and find out people, if not everybody, has gone through something where giving up was an option. But why did you not give up? And one of the big things that can help you so much is that gratitude mindset. You know, it's interesting, I have, I'm gonna mention this actually now, I have these fraternity brothers that, because you all know about a gratitude journal, I'm gonna talk about that in a second, but it's called the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal. And the Brooker was my nickname I got in college. So they'd always call me, I need a dose of the Brooker, I need some inspiration, I need some motivation. And so they know I do gratitude speaking, they know I do a gratitude journal, I've done several books and so forth, and yet they still call me. And they want to get inspired from me. So now I've noticed is that when they call, I go, the Brooker, I gotta to talk to you. I, I'm really upset, I gotta to talk to you about something. So let me ask you something first. Have you written in your gratitude journal today? Well, no, I didn't. I just hang up. I just hit the phone. Bam! I just hit, just hang up. Just hit the red button. And invariably, 10 seconds later, they call back, hey, I think we got cut off. I go, no, we didn't. I hung up on you. Write in your dang journal and call me back. So at some point, I'll be the training wheels, but you got to pedal your own bike. But I will tell you, it takes as long as it takes. And I look at these people that the Robin Williams of the world and Anthony Bourdain, Bourdain and Kate Spade, Chris Cornell, all these people that unfortunately took their life. And I know a little bit about suicide because of my dad. And I don't know for sure if Dana took too many pills on purpose or not, but it certainly is not a wise thing to do. Why are these people hanging themselves? Why are these people doing it? It's obvious money, power, fame, celebrity. That isn't all that it's cracked up to be, but you need tools. And an attitude of gratitude in the gratitude journal can help you so much. It can make such a big difference. So it takes as long as it takes. Don't ever give up. All these people that are heroes of mine, I was telling Scott and his three sons, Matt, Andy, and Tyler last night, that I started about six or seven years ago to be a speaker. And I'd wanted to be a speaker since I was 19 years old. It took me 45 years to get the guts to do it. But you know what? Better late than never. And always follow your dream. And my heroes are Colonel Sanders, who was 63, Ray Kroc, McDonald's 55, Mary Kay Ash 57. Gosh, there's a couple other ones too that are a bit that started really late in life. And so it makes such a difference. It doesn't matter where you are in the journey. As I'm watching some of the slides about some of the performance and how you guys have done in the last year, there's no reason why you can't be the person at the top. There's no reason. I think Russell Wilson said his father said to him, why not you? Why not me? Why not us? And it makes such a big difference. But a lot of it is, is the mindset that you have and it just makes such a big difference. So the next thing I want to mention, it takes as long as it takes, don't ever, ever give up, is make room for gratitude. If you have a lot of junk in your brain, there's no way you're going to have room for gratitude. And you know who I'm talking to. Hopefully it's nobody here. But people that you talk to that always bring up the same stuff. You know, it's like I, I've, I've got friends that are always bitching about the spouse. And I go, well, then why don't you do something about it? I'm so tired of it. Whatever the example is, you know, I need to lose weight. And then give me another cookie. You know, it, it, it's, I just, I don't understand it. So it really comes down to clearing out your brain. It's like the cul-de-sacs. You could go anywhere in Spokane or anywhere. And if you go into those new houses and the, those three-car garages, the big fancy houses, sometimes you go by and the garage doors are open and they're floor to ceiling boxes. Just solid boxes, no room for a car, which I think is what they were intended for. And then there's like a little slot where the person just kind of walks down like this to kind of get to the box they want. Well, to me, that's kind of symbolic of your brain. If you have all this negative stuff, all this junk inside you, if you're not hanging out with the right kind of people, if you're hanging out with negative people that are toxic, you may want to think about them like all that stuff that's in your brain because it's not good for you and it's going to make it a tough, tougher rather for you to have gratitude because there's no room. So I think it's important. And then I think also too, 
Scott's always very kind and talks about when he and I met and how we've all mentored and been mentored and so forth. But I think it's something that does relate to Nordstrom, and that is if you're talking about clearing out your brain and how fast can you change, how fast can you make a difference? How fast can you change behavior? I'll do it in workshops sometimes, and people rate 21 days, 30 days, you know, two weeks, four weeks. These are all these answers that people have, how fast you can change your behavior. You know, this is the time of year that people have a lot of New Year's resolutions. So they've got, they're going to lose weight, save more money, spend more time with the family and kids. I mean, a lot of the ones that are you're kind of typical for this time of year. But how fast can you change behavior? So this was actually before I met Scott. And I was at the Northgate store, and I, I guess I was having a lot of success, and I had the, the top sales in the suit department before I became a store manager. And so there was a board every day, and it had the name of the top department. You'd come in men's suits, and I was always there. And I just apparently must have thought I was something special because I wasn't talking to many people, and I was on my way to the suit department. Finally, one day in the lunchroom, this guy comes in, I never forget, Steve Saray. Because they just, can I talk to you for a second? I said, sure. Can I tell you what the story is about you around the store here? And I went, um, sure. Hey, well, the story is you think you're hot shit, uh, hot stuff. <laughs> and I, I really? And he goes, yeah. Yeah, everybody knows it. And, and, and let me just give you a little example. You walk around here, you don't talk to anybody. You just have your little briefcase, it's real cute. And then you just walk to the suit department and then you get all these big numbers, you get all the awards, but then you just walk to your car, and then you're, you're too good for everybody else around here. I remember it pretty clearly. There's a lot of people in the lunchroom. And I thought about it, and I thought, wow, good point. And I stuck my hand out, shook his hand, and I said, Steve, thank you. Thank you for telling me that. Thank you, having, thank you for having the guts to tell me and not be intimidated, any of those things. And he said, yeah, you're welcome. And actually, I think I gave him a hug. And I turned around, I walked out of that lunchroom, and I thought, you know how fast you can change behavior? You can snap your fingers. And I walked out that door, and I was the friendliest guy you've ever seen in that store forever. I, Hi, how's it going? What's the, what's the latest in pantyhose? What, what kind of colors are you getting in? That's fantastic. Yeah, what's going on with Estee Lauder? That's a hell of a foundation you got. You know, it was like, I was like all over it. And it didn't take any more time. The escalators crisscross like this. They don't go any slower if you talk to people. They go at the same speed. And all of a sudden, I had a much better reputation, but that was in an instant. So walking through those double doors today, that's how fast you can change. I'm going to talk about the gratitude journal next, and I'm hoping you all write in every day. I'm not going to embarrass you and make you tell me how many you did. I already wrote in mine in my hotel this morning, having a cup of coffee before Scott and Tracy and Crystal picked me up. And it's made such a huge difference. Plus, I talk about it. I sure as heck can't practice, not practice it. But it's made such a difference. You can snap your fingers and you can walk out that door and change behavior on anything from the stuff Scott talked about before to some of the things coming up or Kirsten talked about. You want to do better on this, this, or that in the real estate world. That's how fast you can do it. But I think it's so important to know that because when you're really supporting yourself as far as self-esteem and self-confidence, it makes all that stuff so much better. So I, I give you that as an example. One other thing, too, when you've got your sights set on how your life's going to be, people don't always know this. John Lennon was in third grade. I think he was eight or nine years old. And they're doing an assignment in the class. And so they go around the class and, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? And so they get to John Lennon. The teacher says, John, what do you want to be when you grow up? And he goes, happy. And the teacher is just sort of stunned. And she looks back at him and she goes, you don't understand the assignment. And John Lennon thinks for a second, looks back at her and goes, you don't understand life. And I thought it was pretty tremendous for an eight or nine year old John Lennon to see that because happiness is a choice. A gratitude journal is a choice. An attitude of gratitude is a choice. One of my favorite taglines is, gratitude turns what you have into enough. We're always comparing other people. More money, bigger house, better car better vacation, whatever it is, it's just like a cat chasing its tail. It's so crazy. So now I want to talk about a gratitude journal. And I know you all, you all have them, correct, from Windermere? Right? Nodding heads, thank you. And I won't again ask who's using them every day, but I hope you do every day. 
Just like I said to those fraternity brothers, if it makes me feel better, why wouldn't you want to do it every day? But I will tell you on mine, it basically kind of saved my life in dealing with Dana. Because it gave me a place to go every day and to focus on what I had versus what I, don't, what I didn't have. And this particular journal is structured in a way that I'll open it and show it in a second. But first, there's a little saying in the upper left-hand corner. It says, if you think about it, it's like a dream. If you talk about it, it inspires you. But if you write about it, it empowers you. There's something about writing those cards, seeing those words written. You are outgoing, you are friendly, you are happy. You're a good person or whatever it was that those people wrote about you. The same thing, it plants it in your brain. And all this technology, even this thing, this is fine, keyboards, there's still nothing like an old fashioned pen and a piece of paper to plant it on your brain. So the way that my journalist actually is my actual journal that I write in is in the upper left hand corner it says gratitude today and then it says here's Tuesday 11 19 and then the daily number we'll get to in a second. Then there's two lines for current events special occasions that's just so you don't have to have a diary. This can kind of be your go-to book for the day. Then there's about 10 or 12 lines which you're grateful for. Sentences, paragraphs, bullet points, whatever it might be. You can write that down there every day. This thing takes me an average of five minutes a day. That's it. It depends, of course, on how fast you write. Lower left-hand corner, the highlight of the day. A couple of lines for the highlight of your day. In this case, today, we would look at yesterday. What was the best thing that happened to you yesterday? And then on the right-hand side, is the gratitude for tomorrow or your gratitude intentions. This is very powerful. I don't always spend a lot of time on it, but it's programming your subconscious mind of what you're going to be grateful for that hasn't even happened yet. And one of the things I give as an example, I used to write on that side, I'm so grateful to be talking to hundreds of people. And then I started thinking, and I talked to 100 people, then 1,000 people, then I talked to 1,000. I'm so grateful to be speaking to 10,000. I spoke to 10,000 soldiers at Joint Base lewis McCord. 5,000 at 10 a.m. and 5,000 at 2 p.m. They all got gratitude journals the Army bought for them. And then I started writing, I'm so grateful to be speaking and getting my message across to millions of people. And I had a video on YouTube get a million uh, views. So it plants your brain into what you can do if you just want to completely focus on the future as well as today. So I put it on here, gratitude today, gratitude tomorrow. <laughs> Excuse me, tomorrow. So. Another exercise, that little three by five card you all pretty much said you were going to keep, take that card and turn it over. And this is not, this exercise is important to remember is not to be shared. So I'm not going to have you, what you're going to write down, if it's good or bad or not bad, but just anything private information, you're not going to have to share this with anybody. So remember that when you're writing this. So what I'd like you to do first is in the upper left hand corner on the back of the card, I want you to assign your daily number. And your daily number is simply this. 10 is the best day of your life, and one is one of the worst days in your life. And you can do halves too, and that's why you're not gonna share with anybody. If you're not having a, a good day, I don't want to embarrass you or anything. So whatever that number is, seven and a half, five, eight, eight and a half, ten, two, 10, 2, whatever it might be, put it in the upper left-hand corner and put a circle around it. Okay, most people got it. And then next, on the left-hand side of the card, write numbers one, two, three, because you're gonna write, be writing three things. Okay, number one, if you could only pick one thing to be grateful for, what would that be? Write that at number one. Number two, if you could pick a second thing that you're most grateful for after number one, what would that be? Put that at number two. Then when I get to number three, there's always somebody in the audience. Let me guess, the third most grateful thing? I go, no smart ass. It's not that, but, but thanks.
And that's what it is. Like I say, everybody should be a speaker. It's the best. Third, what was the highlight of your day yesterday? This may take a little thinking, take a little thinking, but think about what was the best thing that happened to you yesterday and write that down at number three. This might take, like I said, 30 or 60 seconds. like most everybody's got it so as I say again this is a personal private exercise for you what I'd like you to do you just wrote all three things down I want you to read number one number two and number three again and then I want you to see what your number is and put a number in the upper right hand corner could be the same number could be different but after writing after reading those three things put another number in the upper right hand corner after reading them could be the same could be different and put a circle around that By show of hands, from the left-hand number to the right-hand number, how many people's numbers stayed the same? Okay. Show of hands, left-hand number to right-hand number, how many people's number went up? Almost right on target. It's usually about a third, two-thirds. So what just happened to the two-thirds that went up? That was about a 60-second example of what a gratitude journal will do for you. So you can imagine when you write down, I'm so grateful to Scott and Tracy for inviting me over here in the great dinner and meeting the boys last night, and you plant it in your brain, that's a more expanded version of that. And that's why I'm such an advocate of a journal, and that's why I told you I hang up on these fraternity brothers of mine that won't write in their gratitude journal. So I'll be typically, Scott and Tracy bought you the six word book, which uh, I really appreciate because I've been selling a lot of those and they're really a neat book, 100 Little Snackable Chunks of Gratitude. And you have your gratitude journals from Windermere. And so here again is the Brooker's one. And so when I'm typically selling books, I'll have a table set up and the little book stands and all the things and people come over and talk to me. It's really gratifying to talk to people after the talk. So invariably they'll pick up and they'll go, is this your journal here? And they can see it's all written in. So is it, this is yours here? I go, yeah. Of course I write in my own gratitude journal. I mean, and you, they look at it and they go, you, can I just look at it for a second? Like, don't look too closely. But you, know, you can look at it. So they kind of they thumb through it. In fact, I noticed today, I'm on my second to the last page. They last about 90 days. And here's, you know, there is this Tuesday. Gosh, can't get the page to go here. Anyway, Tuesday, uh, January 7th. And they thumb through it and they go, wow. You write in this every day. I go, Were you listening to the talk? No, I just write. I want you to write in every day. I just write occasionally, you know, because I'm going to be somebody who doesn't practice what he preaches. So, but I'll tell you, I have another reason why this gratitude journal is so important for me. When I first started out speaking, I didn't talk about this very much. This is not something you want to talk about. And as I was growing up, South Hill of Spokane on, off of Rockwood Boulevard on Syringa Road. And my mom was manic depressive. And she would threaten suicide a lot. And I was 15, 16. And we didn't have cell phones or smartphones then, just regular landlines. But she would call me and she'd put the phone right by her mouth and she'd take out her bottle of pills and she'd go like this. You hear that? That's a whole bottle of sleeping pills. You either come over here in the next half hour, or I'll eat all these pills. And I just thought, wow, there was five of us. What a way to be a mom to five kids. What a manipulative thing to do. And then she later died of cancer. But, but I got some of that from her. I got some of that manic depressive. And people find it hard to believe that I'm a pretty high energy person. But I also manage it by 
exercising, writing a gratitude journal, hanging out with the Scott Wetzels of the world, drinking lots of water, taking your vitamins, eating right, you know, getting sleep, all those types of things that are holistic, doing meditation, exercising, etc. But I got it from her. And so now that you are appreciative of that number that you just all said, you can keep it to yourself, whether hopefully that bigger number was nice because you saw what it did, but you know how you can kind of take your temperature. I wake up one day and I'm doing a talk later that morning, I'm a two, maybe even a one. I, I was so down, I just went, oh my God, I don't even know what's the point. I, I, it was just horrible. And, it's, and for those that have ever been through that stuff, it's just like having a boulder on your head or on your body, it's just horrible. So I thought, well, I guess you better practice what you preach. So I went to Starbucks, had my gratitude journal, wrote in the gratitude journal, and that bumped me up to about a four or five. Then I drove up to Burlington, Washington, did a talk about there's almost this entire room full of people, a couple hundred people, it was a big chamber of commerce. And I did my talk, and afterwards this gal comes up to me and she says, you just changed my life. And I'd never heard that at the time, I'd heard it a lot since, but I'd never heard it at the time, and so she says, can I give you a hug? Of course, being single, of course, hug, always, <laughs> always nice. And so I get the hug, and she says, can I buy a couple of journals for my sons, and so on. Anyway, I walk out, I'm all done, I pack everything up, I walk out to the car, and I'm sitting in my car in the parking lot, and I realize that I'm a nine. I'd gone from a two to a four to a five by writing the gratitude journal, to changing the person's life to a nine. All these deadly and destructive coping mechanisms out there, no booze, no coke, no crack, no smoke and dope, no having a beer. I mean, all these things that people do, bless their pee, pick, and heart. You know what they're trying to do? They're trying to numb themselves from some of the stuff that life throws at you. The problem is it can kill you in a lot of cases, and it killed my wife. So I just thought, wow, look what that did just by making a difference. And sometimes I'll walk out of a talk, and I think, I don't know if this talk was more for the audience or more for me, because it reinforces everything that gratitude and an attitude of gratitude can do for you. So I highly recommend that you stick with those journals, and hopefully you do, and again, I won't make you bring up how many, you, uh, how many of you writ have written in them consistently, but it's like anything else, the best example I can give you, I have nothing else to offer, is it's like brushing your teeth. Would you go out of the house without brushing your teeth? No. Well, I wouldn't go out of the house without writing my gratitude journal. It frames my mind so perfectly for everything you're dealing with. So I highly recommend the gratitude journal. Next segment, find yourself, find your passion, find your purpose. I mentioned earlier that I think the most important relationship you'll ever have is the one you have with yourself. People can argue about different types of things, but I think if you find yourself, you find what you're passionate about, you'll probably find your purpose. I've clearly found my purpose is to do what I do now, and it's just thrilling to me to go around the country speaking and giving people an alternative coping mechanism to some of those ones I just mentioned that aren't too good for you. But that relationship with yourself is so important. Now, as an example, here's a $20 bill. So if I just walked out onto this, off the stage here and just gave you a $20 bill, show of hands, would most people take it? Yeah, and, and thank you for nodding your head or raising your hand. And I think the few that wouldn't would think there's some strings that there's no strings that so I just give it to you. You know, and so I think most people would. But but what's interesting to me is that if I do this, how many people will take it still? Yep. If I do this, stomp it. Sucks getting older. <laughs> and then I smooth it out. Sandra Jackson. Again, most people take it? Yep. So if I look at Andrew Jackson and I go, Andrew Jackson, you're a piece of crap. You're worthless. In fact, I don't even know what you're doing on this planet. You know what he would say? He'd look back at me and he'd go, well, you know what, Mr. Speaker Man? You can say whatever you want. I'm still worth 20 bucks. And he would be right. So relative to the relationship you have with yourself, why do you let somebody from time to time crush you, step on you, 
tell you that you're a piece of crap and you don't belong to be on this earth and devalue from twenty dollars to fifteen to ten to five to maybe the worst of all zero why do we let people do that to us as i mentioned back on that card the gratitude piece the gratitude card the gratitude journal seeing yourself in a positive light will protect you from people that would devalue you like that we've had it happen to us all just like i used to call myself an l-o-s-e-r who wants a 20 dollar bill anybody first one up here gets it See, I always want to reward people that sit up front. What's your first name? Dan. Dan. Thank you, Dan. I always want to reward people because people, there'll be this entire thing will be filled and the first two tables empty. And so then we'll go, everybody goes, come up front, get up front. So see, sometimes you can get 20 bucks. You never know. <laughs> but I will tell you, finding out who you are and then finding out what you're passionate about can make such a big difference. There are gosh I just wrote this down the other day if you think if you wonder what happens when you lose your passion if you wondered what happens when people I have a lot of my buddies retiring now and they're just it's just ridiculous they're they're going to Starbucks every day and playing golf I'm gonna do this till I'm in my 90s I don't care so I'm so passionate about it but I wrote this down the other day Bear Bryant was 69 and he had four national championships at Alabama he retires and he's dead 33 days later and then more recently, Joe Paterno got involved in that big nasty scandal at Penn State. He gets fired. 77 days later, he was dead. And it's just interesting to me because I, another one was uh, Andy Rooney on 60 Minutes. He retired, and he was well up there in years, but he retired, and that was 33 days later. So I think it's just so important if you find yourself and you have that great relationship and then you figure out what you're passionate about there's three people that happen to all be really passionate about something and they all died within a very short amount of time and that relationship you have with you back to that card people tell me that's very flattering to me the exercise I put the card on my computer I put it on my refrigerator it's on my bulletin board it's on my mirror in the bathroom I wanted to look at that every day and whether it's the front or the back both of them are really good to look at but I remember that relationship you have with you is so critical and if you're really honest you think what can I do every day to build that relationship and I was in Reno I don't know five or six years ago with a buddy of mine and this was before the tickets for the slot machine we were playing card games and we were playing the slot machines and I hear this screaming from about 10 or 15 feet away and he's at the slot machine you put a quarter in it's like a thousand dollars in quarters so it's just cascading down quarters and he's he's got his hands up like Brooker and he's got the double fists up in the air and isn't this fantastic and I walk over I'm standing behind him and the quarters are coming down and he's I'm buying dinner and I went that's great and as I'm watching the quarters just kept coming down coming down and I went wow and I just had to be on I was so happy for him but it would have been just a teeny bit happier if it was me <laughs> and I thought anybody that doesn't believe that I think is full of baloney I mean it's just I'm happy of course but it would have been even cooler if it was me but that's that relationship with you have yourself so if you can find out and, and reaffirm that relationship through a gratitude journal reading rereading that card understanding what a cool person you are then following it up and then figuring out what you're passionate about I would hope everybody in here is passionate about real estate and what they can do and how they can yes it's nice to make a living but it's also neat to be helping the buyers and sellers and so forth you'll probably find your purpose and I think at some point most everybody wants to find their purpose at least I think they do because it's really again there's that birth date and there's that other date that we have and they say life is the dash between the two dates and I guess that's true but what you do with that is so incredibly important a couple more things I, I'm a really big believer in getting a system and I think it's important to be very organized I'm sure you have planners and that type of thing but I will tell you if you wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning how many people one more just a couple more show of hands here how many people wake up in the morning at 3 in the morning can't get back to sleep and are thinking about good things okay one two three four people okay good God, I want to be them I just don't understand what's wrong with the brain it goes to the negative that card you have you wake up at 3 in the morning you can keep it by your bed 
Flip that card over and see those things you're grateful for. You think it moved that number before? It can help you get back to sleep. So something to keep in mind, just another use of that too. So, all right, I wanna talk about, oh, grab that other card if you would. There's that other card that's the, and I wanna tell you about a couple of things that I do that you might be interested in. First of all, get your smartphones out because we're gonna do an exercise with smartphones here in a little bit. And I send out a one minute video every Monday at four in the morning, it's 60 seconds long, it's on gratitude. And if you're interested in getting it, text the word grateful, it's on the card there, to 42828. The number is 42828. You put in the word grateful in the message box and it'll pop up and ask you for your email and you put in your email and you'll get the, the video. A lot of people like that. It goes out to about 5,000 people on Mondays. And then also, as long as I'm on that subject, if you're interested, that gets the Monday morning minute every Monday at 4 a.m. and it's just a good way to start your week. Uh, also, if you like more videos on YouTube, you just go to David George Brook and you can subscribe. So if you're interested, and I do a lot, of, a lot more training videos and a lot more in-depth things on how to use a gratitude journal and things other than that. Um, little tidbit, if you will, for Monday morning, which again is just to try to get your week off to a good start. I did want to mention one thing, though, that I think is really important. I have you keep raising your hands. Thank you for being so participatory. How many people here think they're good listeners? About two-thirds. I'm, I'm shocked by what crummy listeners so many people are. And one of the classic examples is that talking to a friend I saw yesterday about remembering names. You're in a business where remembering names is very important. A lot of businesses, it's very important to remember names. And yet, it's funny, we meet people all the time and we forget their name the minute we meet them. And there's certain people in your lives that are very important. Clients, bankers, finance people, sellers, buyers, whatever it might be, inspectors. And it's just helpful. The more you know somebody's name, the more they're gonna feel attached to you because you took the time to remember their name. So I always recommend the two old things from Dale Carnegie about using the name immediately. Where's Sally? So Sally was, there's Sally right there. And well, I was saying hi to her later, earlier, and then where's Kirsten? There's Kirsten, they're right next to each other. Say the name immediately to plant it in your brain and then use name association. So the first person you think of and I will use, I'll give it, and this is the thing, it's so important, name association can make such a difference to remember a name. It doesn't matter who the person is, the name association comes from, but it works. You take the first name that pops up. If I was, I met Sally before a few months ago, but to meet her again, the first Sally I would think of was the astronaut, Sally Ride. And that's just why that would occur to me. So whatever it is, use that to plant it in your brain. And I'll also tell you something else, as long as you're about listening, it's so important to ask questions, become a really, really good listener, and ask good follow-up questions. One of the ways you can tell if somebody's a good listener is you can tell because they can't ask the next question unless they heard what you just said. So Andy's going to law school. Did he finish law school? Yeah. Did he take the bar? Yeah, he took the bar and he did really well on it. Where did he take the bar? How can I ask Scott those questions if I didn't hear everything he just said? Two, three word, phrases I'd like you to think about. You can write them down if you want. They're the best listening things that will get you to be the best listener in the entire world. The first one is tell me more. Don't keep talking about yourself. Just tell me more. And then they go and the people just keep going. And they'll think you're the greatest person they ever met. 
I tell you, it's so true. And you know, when we went to Hawaii, we did this, this, and that. In fact, I was joking. Was it was Scott? It was somebody else. It just fractures me how people so badly want to tell you what they're doing. And I've had people before that have come up, and here's the guy here, and here's a friend of mine, and they say, "Oh, hi, how are you?" And we're talking, and the guy says to him, "You know, uh, where have you been? How, what have you been up to lately?" And the guy goes, uh, "We just got back from Hawaii." And the guy over here goes, "Oh, that's so funny." We just went to Hawaii. We were in Hawaii last year. We went surfing and we went to all these places and we did all this. And I've actually stopped you. I was like, hang on a second. We're not talking about you, okay? You asked about him. Why are you now talking about you? People do it all the time. Tell me more, we'll avoid that. The other three word phrase, and then what? They're telling you something, and I saw this house, and I did this, and I did that, and then what? They'll tell you more. They'll let them tell you more, and then say, and then what? And they'll tell you even more. So, really, really powerful. And I always get a kick out of it because people, it's like they said, people think they're better drivers than they actually are. I think it's the same thing with listening. So I try to go, sometimes in talks, I've gone around and memorized or just paid attention to 15 or 20 names. Not because I have such a great memory, just because I wanted to prove it's, it's not that hard to do. It's very possible and it makes a big, big difference. And if somebody asks you too many questions, just say, I'm boring, let's talk about you and flip it back to them. That's another great one to do. By the way, one quick thing, I'm gonna wrap up here in a few minutes. Relative to a goal, I think it's so important to set goals. This is something you may have heard of before, but I absolutely love this because I think it applies to a lot of what we do. It's three little sentences. A dream written down with a date becomes a goal. A dream written down with a date becomes a goal. A goal broken down into steps becomes a plan. A goal broken down into steps becomes a plan. And lastly, a plan with action taken makes your dreams come true. So you can break it down. Now, I don't want to sound like the number one cheerleader for the Wetzel boys, but three impressive young men for those of you that have met them. They all had different things, and I said that they were doing very different disciplines. All very engaged, very successful, off to a great start in their 20s. In this crazy world that we have, but just you don't see that all the times where all three sons or all three children are just rock stars. But I told him, I said, you might want to think about, I don't like to give advice, I just don't like that word, but I said, you might want to think about, and I don't like the word bucket list, but you might want to think about a list of 50 or 100 things you want to do while you're on the planet. And I know it's been called that, but I did it when I was really young. And one of my things was, I wanted to be a national champion. And that was a goal I set. And I didn't care what it was, I just wanted to be a national champion. And I had all sorts of things. I wanted to learn how to fly and buy an airplane and be a millionaire. And I did a lot of different things just by setting a goal and then breaking it down into those steps and having a plan of action and then taking steps towards that plan of action. Breaking it into bite-sized chunks. And so then my brother buys this hydroplane. And I said, can I be on the crew? He goes, yeah. So I'm on the crew and I'm like drying the boat and everything when he comes back from driving it and stuff. And we were racing it all up and down the coast. And then at some point I said, well, can I try driving it? And I just took it out and took it back and, and that was real scary. And then I later went to go around kind of a track and um, eventually wound up driving it more and more and more. And then in 1984, out of about 600 boats, we became the national champions in the United States. And I remember all the steps that I went through to get to that goal. So really, again, whether it's Windermere, your personal life, your professional life, whatever it might be, if you break it down into steps, and if the foundation of all this is gratitude, because gratitude keeps you centered and keeps you going on the days that doesn't seem as possible. Because man, when you're flying high, man, when I was at Nordstrom, I got my phone just ringing off the hook. I had so many people that wanted a job there and I was a big shot store manager and stuff. Then I leave to pursue some other things. Do you think my phone didn't ring? I was like, hello, is there something wrong with my phone? Nobody called me. It was so funny because I wasn't somebody who could impact their lives anymore too. So anyway, um, all right, get your, get your smartphones out. This is what I want to do. So just to kind of recap, I want to just go back and just mention embracing gratitude. Really think about this mindset. Gratitude turns what you have into enough. It takes as long as it takes. Please don't ever give up under any circumstances. I told you about Connor and his, his baseball as an example. Clear out your brain, make room for gratitude. 
Learn to change your behavior in an instant. As I said, it's, maybe it's not possible, but I would hope a few people walk out of here today and I'm changing the behavior on something just by that snap of the fingers. The gratitude journals, you already have the gratitude journals and I would encourage you to write them as, in them as often as you can, hopefully daily. Lots of times I'll go back during the day and put little notes in the margin. That's kind of a neat thing, so you can reflect on that later. It's so cool to be able to go back and refer to it and see what you were thinking on that particular day. And it's just, there's something about, oh, excuse me, I don't want to finish that, the finding yourself. Really understand that relationship with yourself. Understand that if you can get yourself connected and the passion, you'll probably find your purpose. I think most people want to find their purpose. Not everybody, but I think most people. And then just have a system and set goals and be a good listener. Remember names. Remember names is another one that's just really, really powerful. Sharing gratitude, last thing I'm gonna talk about. When anybody's excited, I mean, you saw some of the slides up here and you're the top dog or you're the first person or it's Thrive 2019, whatever it might be. I mean, you're, who are you gonna call when you find out you're at the top of the list? Husband, wife, friend, children, whatever it might be. My son got a promotion yesterday, he works for Pepsi down in San Diego. And first person he called was me. I'm so excited, Dad, I'm a district manager. He's 25 years old. So you, you wanna share it with people. And so sharing gratitude is sort of like the ultimate thing. After you've got gratitude down, you've learned how to, it helps your life, and now you're gonna help other people. So here's what I want you to do, a little exercise. Get those smartphones out. This is called the four T's as in the letter T. It's gonna be telephone, text, tweet, or tell. Now I will tell you, most people will text when I give you this option. So once again, I'm gonna give you 60 seconds, and I want you to text somebody to tell them how grateful you are to have them in your life, and use the word grateful, go. And stop. Once again, with that range of, oh, not my mic. Once again, from that range from junior high to senior centers, the junior highs, you've never seen fingers move so fast. It just blows my mind. They've done like six texts in like 60 seconds. It's just crazy. And then at the senior centers, <laughs> which I'm not far from, so I'm not picking on anybody. So what happens typically again after I'm done is that whether I'm at my book table or wherever, people come up and they want to show you the look at look at my my text here, look at the response. And so it's it's funny, I get this uh, here, look at this, David, and it says, I'm grateful for you too. What do you want? <laughs> and then there was one recently where it said, Are you sure you sent this to the right person? And then there was one that was, that was in a performing arts center and the lady was about where Dan is. And, and so I could hear, she was using the phone. Not many people use the phone. And she's got the phone up to her. You know, honey, I'm just so grateful for you. And, and uh, I th assuming it was her husband, assuming it was her husband. And you know, I, I just, I'm grateful for you and I'm just so thankful and I just appreciate you so much. And I just want to let you know, I don't know, some speaker just told me to call you and tell you. <laughs> I wanted to go, 
No, that's it's supposed to be your idea. It's not my idea. But I will tell you and I will leave you with this thought. When I do in, go into businesses and I put more gratitude equals less pain, less stress, less mistakes, less mistakes made, fewer days absent, more gratitude equals more collaboration, more employee retention, less turnover equals less cost. But if you've been looking for an effective coping mechanism to this, again, this crazy life thing, I would just ask you, I would in fact challenge you to give gratitude, even if it's just for one week. And again, I know you've got the gratitude journals. Hopefully in that six word book, there's things that'll inspire you in there as well. But try it for a week and see if it can make a shift, just like that number from the left side to the right side made a shift in how you view things. It can help you so much. It helped me. I think it kind of transformed my life. And in many cases, after the things that I went through, I think it kind of saved my life. It can do the same thing for you. Thanks a lot. Thank you.